Vermont PBS in cooperation with Orca Media and the Vermont Press Bureau presents Capital Beat, the week in review from the Vermont State House. Here's host Neil Goswami. Welcome back to Capital Beat. We're pleased to have you back inside the State House with us. Uh, last year, the Vermont Senate passed a legalization bill, marijuana legalization bill, that would have created a regulated market here in Vermont. That did not fare very well in the House, but the House is back this year with legislation to legalize up to two ounces of marijuana. Joining me today to talk about this legislation is Representative Maxine Grad. Welcome, the Chairwoman of the uh, House Judiciary Committee and Representative Thomas Burdett, the Ranking Member of the House Judiciary Committee. Doing? Thanks to both of you for joining us this week. Uh, Representative Grad, yeah. can you just give us a, a brief overview of what your bill does, um, which b both of you are sponsors of? Um, exactly, as well as um, Vice Chairman um, Chip Conquest of, right. New of Newbury. So the, um, the leadership team of the House Judiciary Committee were, yes. um, are the lead sponsors. So, um, so what our bill does is, um, well, it's introduced it, um, as you said, it did um, legalize possession of two ounces of marijuana and, um, and up to seven plants. Um, right now, it's looking like it will um, be one ounce, because um, mm -hmm. we um, heard some concerns. And so possession of one ounce of, um, of marijuana and um, I believe six plants. And, um, and removes the, um, the criminal penalties um, right. for that small amount of personal possession. And I spoke to you, I think about five or six weeks ago, at the very start of the yeah. legislative session, and you said one of your goals this session was to create parity uh, within Vermont's laws pertaining to marijuana and other right. drugs. Right. Um, what, where are we right now, currently, with Vermont policy on marijuana. Right, so when I referred to parity, I was um, referring to under our current decrim, uh, decriminalization law, um, if somebody has um, up to an ounce of dried marijuana, that's a civil ticket. It's a civil fine, it's mm -hmm. like a speeding ticket. Um, however, if another person has um, a similar amount, a plant, um, that person is a criminal. And and I don't think that's, that's fair, so that's what I mean by, by yeah. parity. Last year, the Senate sent a bill to you. Um, it created a regulated market, okay. and I think it got about 25 votes in the 150-member House. Um, why, why did that fail so spectacularly in the House? What was it about it that everyone was so uncomfortable with? I don't think Vermont was, was ready for it. Um, it did not allow any um, ability for people to grow. Um, we heard that um, there was concerns about, you know, corporations possibly dominating the market there, mm -hmm. um, infrastructure concerns, um, and just what wasn't ready. Okay. So. And so, what is what has transpired from last year to this year in terms of uh, where Vermonters are, how they view marijuana policy, and where lawmakers are? Right. So again, so this this bill is a penalty. It's regarding criminal penalties. It's not a tax and regulate right. bill. So I don't. Um, I, so I I, I want to be clear that that yes. we're not talking about that Vermonters are not ready for tax and regulate. That's a, that's a different discussion. Yep. That's a different committee. Um, but I think that people um, do feel that personal responsible use of small amounts of marijuana um, should be on par um, with alcohol mm -hmm. and, and tobacco. And that decrim has been um, successful, although it's still, people are still feeling like criminals. They, um, it's, it's, people are still being incarcerated. Um, they're still getting tickets, you know, expensive tickets. And um, so we could, we could really do better with our criminal justice resources. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I think you'll hear from Representative Burdett in terms of, um, you know, liberty issues and responsible use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good segue to you, <laughs> Representative Burdett. Um, you are a Republican and yep. you joined the chairwoman, who's a Democrat, and the vice right. chairman of the committee, who's a Democrat, in sponsoring this bill. Right. Um, you, your constituents in your district may view this differently than others around around the state of Vermont. So how did you arrive at being a co-sponsor of, of this legislation? Well, uh, um, I have to go back to last year a little bit. Uh, last year, um, overall, I, I'm pro-legalization, mm -hmm. um, but I have constituents to work for. 
and with the bill last year they were very vocal um, uh, I heard a lot from them that they wanted me to vote no and as it turned out uh, I, w I consider myself because of because of my views I consider myself the vote that that killed it in committee I mean it came out of our committee five six right and, and it died and you know uh, fast forward to this year um, it's a whole new makeup in our committee we have five new five different members they're not all new and as soon as I got here uh, early in the session, I uh, heard that the legalization was coming back, and I kind of surveyed our committee and saw that I was 99% sure it was passing out of committee, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be, I just didn't want to be in the room in the discussion. Yeah. I wanted to be at the head of the table with something to say and, uh, and to do some work for my constituents. And uh, there's a couple things in the bill that, you know, that I brought up right off that I didn't agree with, which was the two ounces mm -hmm. uh, for my uh, constituents. And, and that was a deal breaker for yeah. me. It is a deal breaker for me to get that two ounces back to an ounce. You know, less is the main thing that I was shooting for. In the plants, uh, uh, I thought nine plants was too much. And we heard from the Department of Ag uh, here, here, in, here in the building that um, we can actually get away with six total plants, two mature, four mature, mm -hmm. four immature, instead of two mature, seven immature. Right. So those were a couple of deal breakers. I, I, you know that I, uh, I set those parameters early on that uh, what I felt I could do for my constituents. If I just sat, if I was just in the room and, and had nothing to say. I could have done nothing for the constituents, right. and maybe right. it would have come out with two ounces in the nine plants. Who yeah. knows? So. Okay. Um, this might be an unfair question, but uh -oh. do you <laughs> do you do you see the Republican caucus or members of the Republican caucus supporting a legalization um, this year? The majority of the Republican caucus, no. Uh, I, I have talked to a few people that uh, that are considering voting for it. You know, a few people that that uh, probably will vote for uh -huh. it, but. Um, overall, I don't think there's going to be any any big swing as far as the Republican numbers go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Representative Grad, the uh, Representative Burdett mentioned the reworked, remade committee. Um, do you see this committee as being more friendly toward a legalization bill this year? And was that the intention? And in, in when this bill or when this committee was put together? I, I see this committee as being more friendly. I don't think that was the the okay. intention. Um, and again, um, more friend Last year, we um, we were looking at a tax and regulate a very big, a very different, a very different bill. Mm -hmm. So um, I know mm -hmm. it's um, we often go back to last year's bill, but we really need to look at this um, right. separately, differently. We also need to look at it in terms of um, criminal justice reform um, work um, in its entirety that our committee is doing. Um, so this this is really a piece of it. We're looking at classification of um, felonies in, in other areas. We're looking at bail reform. We're really looking right. at our criminal justice system, what's working, what's not, um, yeah. who should we be incarcerating, what should we be spending our criminal resources dollars on. So um, so the, the whole committee is, is very open to, to that broader discussion. Um, and so this is this is just a piece of it, right. and I think that we're finding that really education um, is really the most effective way um, for prevention. Mm -hmm. That incarceration, you know, doesn't work. Um, another thing that I think is very important about this bill is is that right now, our, even our decrim um, system creates a, um, a tension between law enforcement and citizens. They still, you know, they feel like criminals, and um, and I think that um, that community policing is incredibly important, perhaps mm -hmm. more important than ever right now. And so whatever we can do to um, alleviate any tension um, in a way that's not, you know, harmful, yeah. and I don't think this bill is harmful, um, and have law enforcement and community members work together closer um, in other areas, um, I, I think that's a win-win. So, yeah. yeah. One of the issues that several members raised last year was the home grow issue yeah. and that was not on the table last year right. it is in your bill mm -hmm. um, so what what protections are included in the bill to make sure that people are growing in a responsible way and it's not sort of out available for anyone to snag yeah. so um, it has to be out of you know public view plain view uh -huh. I think um, you know, it talks about being in a secure place um, so, and and yeah. once the in a dwell, yeah. yeah, does it have yeah. to be locked or secured in some fashion? Um, it talks about secure. We haven't we haven't defined that. It doesn't okay. talk about locked. Um, other states do have locked. 
Um, I think we need to be careful if we start talking about locking up substances because frankly we should be locking up alcohol opiates mm -hmm. some people would say guns I mean I, you know so I, I right. you know I, I again I think um, yeah. you know um, a, you know absolutely it should be secure as as should all things that that could potentially okay. harm somebody um, this the legislation you're working on is largely similar to what's happening in Washington DC yeah. have you received representative Berta any feedback on uh, how that is working in our nation's capital? Well, it's hard to figure out how it's working because I can't find anything online. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, every time I try to search something, you know, if I, if I go to teen use, uh, you, you know, uh, highway safety, that type of thing, Colorado and Washington State always pop up. Right. And, you know, with, with what's happening out there. Um, and, and actually, it's, it's good news in those states as far as teen, teen use goes. Mm -hmm. Teen use is, is, is dropping throughout the country and a little faster even in the states that have legalized. But, but Washington, D.C., I can't find anything. So th what that tells me is that nothing has really changed. Uh -huh. You know, they, they've legalized, uh, you know, a, a very small amount. They've, uh, you know, legalized a few plants. And it, again, it tells me that uh, people are using it for personal use. Mm -hmm. And if, if their numbers aren't changing, if they really aren't going up or down. Yeah. And, and, and it, everybody who, not everybody, but 99% of the people who have testified in committee, they're always uh, uh, reciting, the, again, the numbers from Colorado and Washington. And several I've asked, <laughs> what information have you got from Washington, D.C.? And they've got nothing. Yeah, and that's what that's what we're, that's what we're modeling after is Washington D.C. Right. Right. I mean, you know, you hear the horror stories com coming out of Colorado. You know, with the edibles, whether it's you know kids getting hold of edibles, you know, because of the the retail market that they have out there, or animals, you know, eating them, or people going to the emergency room, and. I find it interesting as a libertarian leaning Republican that where there's more government intervention, there's more problem. Mm -hmm. Washington DC, there's no there's no government intervention. Right. And we're not hearing any problems. Right. Okay. So to me that's that's if we're gonna go in this direction, that's, that's the model that's the to model. use. And Portland, Maine actually has had an ordinance in uh -huh. place that that very few, you know, few people knew about that that it's you know by ordinance legal in Portland, Maine, prior to Didn't know that. to their yeah, <laughs> yeah prior to their ballot initiative. Okay, yeah. uh, it's I think most people are aware the governor, mm -hmm. Governor Phil Scott, has expressed his um, leaning toward opposition at this mm -hmm. point through uh, through people who speak for him. He's sort of come out more against it than he was, has in the past. Mm -hmm. One of his key concerns is road safety, mm -hmm. and I know that's something that your committee yep. has uh, been looking at and right. seeking to address. Where do we stand with uh, with road safety in terms of legalization, and uh, do you believe you can satisfy the governor's concerns? Well, last <laughs> year, uh, if I remember the numbers right, we had uh, about 25 DRE, drug recognition yep. experts in the state. And, and there was money allocated for another 10 to 15 to add to that. And from what I remember last year is we were told that that would suffice, that would make the state whole in a sense as far as the number that we needed. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's also another program called a I, I don't remember what A-RIDE stands for. Yeah, but it's a, it's, it's, but, it, it's, yeah. a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, specialized a, training. Yeah. It's specialized course. training for uh, recognition. My son is, is a, uh, on the police force out in Seattle and, and he's A-RIDE certified. Okay. He says it's a, a great program uh, and it works really well. But, um, so as far as satisfying Last year, uh, we, we satisfied what the criteria was last year, and it seems like if we have enough DREs last year, then it, it should work for this year. Right. Yeah, the other thing is um, we heard actually testimony today from our state's um, uh, drug and DUI prosecutor that, that these are really separate issues mm -hmm. um, and, and should be treated as, as such and that right. we've had problems with highway safety for a very long time and it's certainly been one of my priorities for the right. 16 years that, that I've been here and, um, and 
that the transportation committee I know is is looking um, at those at those issues. So it, essentially, so it's an existing problem now abso that the state is working to address, right? Uh, and it should be dealt with separately from a legalization bill. Um, ab absolutely, because we must continue to address it, and um, and like I, and things much as Representative Bird said, much more is in place. Um, last year, um, additionally, our for, our <coughs> forensic lab um, is being upgraded. That's been a, um, a huge um, issue in terms of actually being able to um, prosecute um, impaired driving cases because um, blood tests would have to be um, sent yeah. out of state. It was very expensive. Our lab, it will be up and running um, in September. Um, so I think that's another thing in place. The same thing with prevention. People are very concerned about prevention. Yeah. We heard very, very encouraging mm -hmm. testimony from the Department of Health that there is prevention, um, social media, a website for parents in place. Um, that was not there last yeah. year. So. Um, you know, and, and and a year ago, people said I was the one that that you know <laughs> killed the killed the bill, and um, because of my concerns, yeah. many of those you know that that the governor expresses now, and so I think the fact that um, and and Representative Byrd had talked about his vote um, right. last year, so the fact that here we are um, sponsoring this bill shows that a lot has changed in a year. Yeah. And, um, so I've got so. about 20 seconds left. Uh, you do, do you both believe that you can make the convincing case to the governor that uh, you're working to address those concerns and that he should end up supporting this? Well, we'll do our best. I mean, uh, we put the facts, you know, out on the table, and, I mean, you can't deny the facts of, of how far we've come just in a year as far as highway safety and education goes. Okay. Right. Very good. My thanks to Representative Thomas Burdett, the ranking member, member of the House Judiciary Committee, and Representative Maxine Grant. Yeah. Great, thank the you. Chairwoman. Thank you. And thank we you. will be right back with Senator Dick Sears. to Capitol Beat. I'm now pleased to introduce Senator Dick Sears, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee from Bennington County and representing my hometown of Bennington. Right. Thank you for being here, Senator. Thank you for having me, Neil. Uh, so we talked with uh, Representative Maxine Grad about the House bill yeah. dealing with marijuana legalization. It's, uh, it's very different from what the Senate passed last year. Um, can you give us your thoughts on uh, the current sentiment in the Senate about uh, where sh we should be heading in terms of legalization. Well, I, you know, we haven't really delved into it formally, um, but we've had some informal conversations I've had with several senators. And there seems to be a broad consensus that we're happy that this, the House is taking up legalization mm -hmm. after last year's debacle. Um, and at the same token, I think there remains sentiment in the Senate that we would prefer a regulated system with a full-blown uh, way to sell marijuana, try to eliminate or at least reduce the reliance on the black market. And now, um, with Massachusetts and Maine having passed legalization laws to limit the um, amount of money from Vermont going out of state to Maine and Massachusetts to mm -hmm. buy marijuana. Uh, in terms of a retail market, uh, last year was a it was a pretty expansive bill. Do yeah. you expect if uh, if the House sends you a bill that legalizes marijuana, do you expect that your committee or somewhere through that legislative process in the Senate that a retail market would be added to the bill? Well, I don't know if it would be added, but it certainly would be considered. But you have to, in a legislative process, you have to kind of figure out what is going to be doable and. We've had a change in leadership in the House, a change in leadership in the Senate, and a change in the governor's office. Mm -hmm. So we will certainly look at, you know, what's what's doable. But you don't want to give up everything in pursuit of the perfect. Right. Uh, from our perspective, what might be perfect. So we're willing to work with the other body to try to develop some kind of compromise position that at least puts us on a track towards a regulated. Mm -hmm system. Okay. Uh, a couple of things about the House bill. 
it in its current form where it where it stands right now it would be two ounces or less of marijuana that somebody could possess right. legally does two ounces seem like a reasonable amount seems like a lot to me uh -huh. um, given the amount of discussion that we had um, in the Senate regarding the amounts mm -hmm. and um, I think when you look at um, the ability to uh, again um, forcing people into the black market is a problem and so yeah. the possession of an ounce or two ounces that's certainly negotiable but I would prefer an ounce. Okay. The uh, Governor Scott has raised his concerns with the bill right. and one of them in particular is the road safety yep. uh, sentiment that we would be dealing with a number of people perhaps driving right. under the influence of marijuana. Um, do you see a way to satisfy the governor's concern? Well the Senate bill last year I think would have satisfied the governor's concern. Um, it called for more uh, drug recognition experts, it called for every trooper, and as many local officers as possible to be familiar with the A-Ride program so that we can detect drug driving in the normal course of events. I noticed in the paper this morning there was a case in Bennington of a, of a, a driver who had an accident and they identified her as driving uh, under the influence of drugs. She went to the local Shaftesbury Barracks of the state police and was processed and charged with driving under the influence of a drug mm -hmm. through the drug recognition expert. So we feel that uh, by increasing the number of drug recognition ex experts so that they're available statewide and geographically available is one of the best methods. But assuming for a minute that people aren't driving under the influence of any other drug other than marijuana, I don't think it gets to the problem. I. I think people are generally dry, you know, some people are generally driving under the influence of certain drugs, yeah. whether they be painkillers that they have a prescription for, or they be cocaine, heroin, um, you name it. So I think to just focus on marijuana and say, we're not going to legalize marijuana until we have some system to keep our roads safe mm -hmm. is kind of um, putting the horse after the cart. Yeah. Uh, you're a veteran member I mean the of the cart after the, the horse. The cart after the horse, right. Yeah. Uh, you are a veteran lawmaker here in Montpelier. Right. Um, what is your sense uh, in terms of uh, the chances of passage this year for, for legal marijuana? I would say they're fairly good, but um, I certainly wouldn't be counting on it. Yeah. I think it's got a lot of hurdles to pass. As I said, um, you know, I'm not sure they have a majority in the Senate. I mean, in the House last mm -hmm. year, there was a, it was a, you know, a very difficult. But then again, I'm not sure how many people had actually were familiar with the bill and had actually yeah. uh, spent time studying the issue. But at any rate, if there's, if it can get through the Judiciary Committee, um, and get through any other committees it needs to go through, then I think it has a better chance. Okay, now. Uh, Last year, after the, the very lopsided defeat in the House, right. you and others in the Senate said you would wait for the House to yep. uh, move forward on a legalization bill. But in the meantime, the Senate has been working on a uh, medical marijuana bill that would right. expand the program. Yep. So can you just give us a quick uh, well, update the, on where the, you're the at? The medical marijuana bill that the Senate had worked on is actually something that was worked on by the Justice Oversight Committee this summer. And we had general buy-in from both House and Senate members on most of the recommendations that were put into the bill. So the bill does a number of things. One, it adds PSTD. Parkinson's and Crohn's disease to the number of diseases where you can treat the symptoms through medical marijuana. Secondly, it allows the uh, dispensaries to become for-profit. When we originally set up medical marijuana, we required the dispensaries to be uh, non-profits, mm -hmm. and there is absolutely no benefit to them, and it actually hinders their ability to raise revenue and, right. and do other things, so we allow them to become for-profit. Um, it also would it would seek the expansion to from the current four licenses to eight, and the hope there is that the extra licenses would be used to have better geographic dis, uh, distribution of the dispensaries 
for example, one of my constituents had to drive an hour and a half to Brattleboro to buy some plants to start his own grow operation mm -hmm. uh, in Bennington. And an hour and a half is, uh, that's one way, so it's a three hour trip to, to buy his product. Um, we also uh, have done some other things like allowing advertising, which um, very limited, but it was the same language we had in S-241 last mm -hmm. year, the marijuana bill. And the reason for doing that was that um, we certainly believe that it, if there was a challenge, they haven't challenged yet, but a challenge by the dispensaries, that we didn't allow advertising, the courts would find that it was a First Amendment violation mm -hmm. to the Constitution would order that, so we felt to take a preemptive strike and say it's limited advertising would be a better way to go. Right. And it does a few other things. Okay. And that bill received, I believe, unanimous support unanimous, we didn't on hear second any reading. No, I heard no no's. It was a voice vote, and there were no no's. I've heard some concern expressed by some senators about PSTD being added, and some folks at UVM certainly indicate that it may not be warranted, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm on the understanding that there is a, uh, a case with, before the Human Rights Commission where the Human Rights Commission has found that we're discriminatory by not providing uh, relief for the symptoms of PSTD with mar medical marijuana. So um, we'll see where that goes. Um, it's up for third reading tomorrow, and I don't know if there'll be a, if we'll wait and hear a little more from the University of Vermont and All others. Right. Very good, Senator Sears. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us, and I, I see your Bennington flag pin. Well, there. absolutely, it's always yeah. appreciated. We're, well, you know, we're fighting, refighting the Battle of Bennington here in the <laughs> right. State House. And on behalf of everyone at Orca Media and Vermont PBS, I thank you for watching the program, and we hope you'll join us again next week.